Hey there, guys. What's going on? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're going to be going over the various types of data engineers that kind of exist. Now, I'm going to be kind of broadly explaining this because some of these data engineers are more like software engineers. Others are probably closer to analysts. But honestly, the data engineering world is kind of a spectrum. And ever since about 2000, maybe 17 or 18, it's continued to bifurcate and create new roles. So let's go over these various new roles. So for this video, we're going to start from the lowest layer, which is software engineer slash data infrastructure. So generally you'll see this role. It will again be software engineer comma data infrastructure. And these specific engineers are often focused on building the data infrastructure that the data platform engineers, which we'll talk about shortly, have to then manage. So they're often building things like Presto or Hive or something similar to that, that helps manage your data. I've actually interviewed someone that I'd say kind of focuses on this area, which is Nellish. He has done everything from uh, contribute to projects such as uh, Hadoop, Spark, uh, DBT, as well as Iceberg. So he's very interested, I'd say, in working on these types of projects, projects that often are about managing or processing large amounts of data. He's also done a lot in terms of like data catalogs and things like that. You can, you can look at his various projects uh, on his LinkedIn. I'll kind of put a few of them up here in a second. But these specific individuals are mostly interested in building the infrastructure that will then eventually manage your data. So this is very different than like your traditional data engineer that actually builds data pipelines. Instead, their major impact has been helping us, data engineers, really be able to actually wrangle all of this data by creating systems that can either manage or process or you know keep track of all of this data that we're trying to create value out of. But all of this eventually, once it gets developed, needs to be managed, it needs to be operationalized. And generally, when I've heard this term, it's generally pushed onto the data platform team or often data platform engineers. And I think one example of this is Chad Sanderson of Convoy, who that's what he kind of runs. He's kind of head of data, but I'd say a lot of his focus in particular, at least based off of my discussions and based off what he talks about, is about not just building data pipelines, which is part of his focus, but also building infrastructure that actually manages those data pipelines and everything else. So your software engineers, comma data infrastructure, focus on building things that can manage data. Then you have your data platform engineers that kind of come next, and their focus is on managing all of that stuff that they build. So you've kind of got this layer, right? So software engineers build the stuff. After that, someone needs to manage it, and that's the data platform team. Their focus is on building things, like for example, when I was at Facebook, like data swarm and then managing it. Or for example, Presto, and then managing it. Because someone has to actually manage the operational side of things. You can build things, but then actually managing the operational side is also a challenge. Sometimes this falls on the DevOps team, but at larger companies, it will often fall on the data platform team. They will build what is called the data platform. Again, this can take many different shapes and forms. Um, some are kind of the traditional ingestion, storage, data catalog, data QA um, components, and it's just being managed by them. Others are different, but that's kind of the traditional um, approach. And that's data platform engineers. They develop the platform, but that's not necessarily useful to the business, right? Like, okay, we've got a platform. Now, once you've kind of built this platform, you need data engineers. And data engineers are the ones that actually take, again, the things that software engineers, common data infrastructure, have kind of built, and the things that platform engineers have kind of managed, and they take all of that and start processing the data. They start creating core infrastructure in terms of data. So when I worked at Facebook, this is kind of the position I had, which is we really focused on building core data infrastructure. So our data infrastructure was often used by probably tens, dozens, if not more of other teams. We were not building the actual dashboards of final products that people are using. We were building this kind of core layer where the table was our end product because we knew that dozens of other teams were using it. Our focus wasn't on, again, delivering direct value to products, but instead focusing on consistently deploying very specific tables. And this was often requiring a little more uh, coding. You know, you weren't just writing SQL scripts, but instead you were also writing some API connectors and uh, SFTP connectors, uh, maybe the occasional log parser, but it required a little more effort to actually pull that data uh, from these raw states. And so this is, I think, what people consider a traditional data engineer. Some people kind of go into a, a role and they'll think that, hey, I'm going to be a data platform engineer. I'm gonna be running everything off Docker and Kubernetes and things that 
feel very familiar to them, but then they'll get into position and feel like, oh, I'm just kind of writing API connectors or SFTP connectors or parsing a log. And that's not always fun for everyone. But if you're more focused on kind of building core data pipelines, I would focus on roles that clearly are looking for people that are somewhat skilled in SQL, but also skilled in something like Python, Spark, Scala, something similar to that if you're looking for more core pipelines. But all of this is to build core infrastructure. So if we're kind of looking at this as like a chart, you're gonna see kind of your baseline where it's some sort of software engineer building the baseline data infrastructure. And it was very common at Facebook that someone built it. Someone built Presto uh, at Facebook. And then someone had to manage Presto at Facebook. And then I built pipelines on top of Presto at Facebook. And then someone took those core data pipelines and tables that I built and built further kind of aggregation tables and product tables or uh, product analytics tables on top of that. And that's where you kind of have like this BI engineer analytics engineer layer. And I'm not going to stick to specifically to topics here or specific role titles here, because truth be told, someone's going to argue out in the chats that, hey, analytics engineers only do transforms or BI engineers and analytics engineers are different. But Basically, this tends to be the role connects more closely to the business. This could be an analyst that's very technical. This could be a data engineer that's a little more personal and a little more focused on the business value. And that was often the case at Facebook. But the point is their focus is generally more closely tied to the business. They're not just focused on, you know, building these pipelines that parse the data and make sure it's accurate, but then they're focused on how do I actually drive value with the business? How do I build pipelines that an analyst or a product manager can look at and look at dashboards and find some sort of value from it? Now, these roles have drastically changed over the decades, honestly, because someone has always had to play this role. Someone has always had to play this kind of middle role between tech and business. In general, technical people tend to be very technical and wanna do technical things. And in general, non-technical people have been very non-technical and want to do non-technical things because that's how they feel like they drive value. But a much smaller majority of people want to drive value somehow by conveying these either business logic or tables or metrics that they're creating and then somehow pushing it either to a dashboard or giving it to an analyst that they can push it to a dashboard. And there's honestly so many various combinations of how uh, closely tied they are to the business that how the value is driven really depends. I mean, again, I've seen some companies where they're kind of, you can call it not necessarily data stack, but data team uh, setup looks kind of like this. So I'm putting it up here. Um, maybe if you're at Facebook, you kind of look like this, or maybe if you're a single startup, you look like this and you're just taking care of everything. Like there's no specification between these various roles. And that's also kind of important, but as you kind of grow and as you kind of look for the right position, it is really difficult to figure out which one of these positions is right for you because there's just so many variations. I haven't even brought in things like data architect, data governance kind of roles, maybe even something like data modeler. And there's all these specific positions, um, especially as you go for larger companies can kind of be confusing in terms of like, what is the value you drive? As companies mature, like even Airbnb, they start hiring roles like data governance director, which probably wasn't considered as highly maybe five to 10 years ago. But now as they're kind of, I think maturing are looking towards that kind of work because as your company matures and you understand that you need to build systems that not only provide accurate data, but give access to the right people at the right time. There are so many roles in the whole data engineering world. So I wouldn't get too caught up on being a data engineer if you wanna be involved in the data world. Instead, I would focus more on what you enjoy. If you like data science work, despite my video about not becoming a data scientist, then you should do it. If you like data engineering work, you should do it. If you're kind of drawn towards data governance, there are a ton of roles in that position as well. And you need to ask yourself, what do you think you drive value with? Which part of these various roles across this very spectrum of software engineer to data engineer to analyst do you drive value with? I'd focus less on the money and focus less on all these things that are very distracting and honestly not, <laughs> just not building your career in the right direction and focusing on things that you feel you drive value in because for all of us, that means different things. You should focus on the things that you really connect with. And honestly, even if data engineering sounds boring, it could be a lot of fun for you. So I wouldn't get too concerned on the fact that engineer is not in the title. Whether you're a software engineer building data infrastructure or an analyst who just uses the data that a data engineer or analytics engineer provides you, I would focus mostly on driving value. Don't get too connected to the infrastructure you're developing or various cool tools.
those tend to pass. Take that from someone who lived in the Hadoop era and thought that was going to be the next thing that he needed to learn. Technologies come and go, but the way you drive value honestly doesn't change that much. The more you can kind of sell yourself and actually produce value from data, the more people will value your skills. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all next time. Thank you and goodbye. I'm <laughs> sorry.